Wow, guys, we made it. Episode seven, how to draw a fantasy map, the final episode. Now, don't worry, I will probably keep on making fantasy map videos for a very long time, so definitely get your subscribe finger ready. Subscribe finger? Which finger do I use to subscribe? But in this one, we're gonna be going over a lot of the extra things you might wanna to add to your map, the accessories, the accoutrement. So get your pen or pencil ready and let's get down to it. Hi everybody, my name is Nate and you are watching WASD20, a channel about tabletop RPGs and fantasy maps. In today's video, we're going over all the extra accessories you might want to include on your map. I shouldn't say all of them because a lot of you will probably point out lots of things like, what about this thing or that thing? But we'll be talking about four or five of the more common things that you might want to add to your map. The first being the Compass Rose. All right, so first we're gonna be drawing a compass rose. Now, a compass rose is intended to tell you which way is each of the cardinal, cardinal directions on your map. But of course, pretty much everyone does north being up, so you could argue it's not really necessary, but it's best not to assume, and besides, compass roses just look cool. So we're gonna do one. Now you can be super simple with this. You can freehand it. I recommend going to Google image search and just looking at compass roses or going to search for historical maps or fantasy maps and look at compass roses. They can be very simple. You could do something like this or you could do something very complex and perfectly geometrical. For this map, I'll be doing something kind of in betweenish, a pretty simple classic style compass rose, but I'm not gonna be stressing the exact dimensions. If you wanna be thorough, it's best to start with a series of intersecting lines and concentric circles surrounding them, something like this, and those just act as a handy reference point. For my map, I'm gonna be drawing them in non-photo blue pencil. It's a handy tool that just shows less, especially when I scan it, I can immediately eliminate those blue pencil lines. As always, I have links to all my tools down in the video description. So I'm using this circle template and a straight edge to get my circles and lines. I'll go ahead and speed this thing up here so you don't have to watch me draw the whole thing. After I was finished, I realized the compass rose might be a little bit big for this map and might get in the way of my border a bit, but that's okay. Put the cardinal directions on and we've got a nice looking compass rose. Before we move on to the next mapping element, I'd like to thank my sponsor for this video, Dungeon Fog, whose new expansion, Project Deus, is nearing the end of its Kickstarter campaign. It's doing really well and for good reason. We've seen a lot of mapping tools, but I have never seen one that allows you to create a custom town or city map and then zoom in to a specific building or alley for an encounter map, or zoom out to a larger region or world map. They also have now unlocked a desktop application, and for those who don't like subscriptions, they've even added a one-time buy option at the platinum level and above. There's a ton of cool features in this software, so go check it out for yourself right now via the link in the video description. At present, you have six days left to back this amazing tool for world builders, so go check it out. Thanks, Dungeon Fog. All right, now I don't usually do this on maps, but on this one, I did decide I'm gonna do a scale. I would like to try to determine how far it is from point A to point B. One of the reasons a lot of people avoid this, I think Tolkien's original maps of Middle Earth didn't have a scale, and I know that George R.R. R. Martin in Game of Thrones series is definitely a little bit hesitant to be pinned down to exact distances. And probably one of the big reasons is they are afraid of inconsistencies, and uh, I am often afraid of that too. But for the purpose of a tabletop RPG, it can be useful for your players to know how far it is from one city to another. And I generally try to think of it in days. How many days travel do I want it to be from, for example, Arazun to Zadel's Reach? 
and in my case, I decided, eh, I don't know, maybe four to six days of normal travel. In Dungeons and Dragons, the rules say that a normal party of adventurers traveling at a normal pace will travel about 24 miles per day. They can travel 30 if they're really pushing it, or 18 if they're being extra cautious. So I did a bit of measuring and some calculating and came up with my scale down here of 100 miles. And this also brought up some questions like, well, would there really be no other settlements for six days travel between Arazun and Zadel's Reach? And my answer to that question is probably. Yes, there probably are other settlements, maybe on the river and probably other settlements in other parts of the world too. I kind of build my world in wet cement and try to think of these places as the major points of interest for our story at this point and try to remain adaptive to the way my tabletop RPG goes. That's one of the advantages I have as a world builder who is a game master that maybe an author who's writing a book and wanting to publish does not quite have. In the end, if you are not quite ready to commit to specific distances, I think that's totally fine. Feel free to leave the scale off your map, and uh, you can always just tell your players at the table. Uh, from there to there, it's about three days journey. Next up, we are going to be drawing a border. Uh, totally optional, just a nice decorative thing to make your map look more awesome. And uh, I really like to do them. Now this is something that's a lot easier when I do it in Photoshop. Uh, I've rarely actually done borders by hand. It's kind of a tedious and nerve wracking process for me, but I am going to be doing that and I'm starting by just drawing some straight lines along the edges using my blue pencil. Uh, just trying to get some light lines that will act as a guide for me as I go about drawing my border. Then, most borders also have some kind of corner decoration. Uh, this could be like a box with some kind of emblem in it. Uh, it could just be some kind of abstract design that looks nice. Uh, there's all sorts of options here, but for me, I'm gonna be doing a circle with some kind of symbol in each. Honestly, borders can be very, very simple. I think even like a single line can actually look good and can dress your map up just a little bit. Uh, or maybe you have one line that's thicker and one line that's thinner. I've done those sorts of borders before and I think they can look really nice. For my border here, I decided I was gonna do some kind of, not knot work or braid work per se, but maybe a ribbons crisscrossing anyway. And um, because I am going to have a pattern repeating, I decided I was gonna mark every quarter inch just to give myself a reference for when the line will curve back. Now, as I jump into the actual ink work for the border here, I'm gonna go ahead and speed things up. When I got to the little corner circles, I realized, dang, this is small. I am having a hard time drawing any kind of symbol in this little space, but I did my best. I did a dagger, a shield, a mining pick, and a battle ax, and maybe you can tell that's what they are. I'm not sure what they represent exactly, but I'm thinking maybe it could be important individuals, kingdoms, houses, or it could even be historical eras of this world, or perhaps deities. Next up, I decided to add a sea serpent out in the water here, just fill in a little bit of the blank space. There's all kinds of fun things you can add. Uh, ships, shipwrecks, dragons flying over. For me, I just did a simple sea serpent uh, with head underneath the water, leaving it a little bit mysterious. What is this thing? And yeah, I think they can really help your map feel like a fantasy map. And that is really gonna put the finishing touch on this map, but what about? Fill in the blank, you've got some other things you want to see. I know it, I can hear you saying it. A legend, a key. So a legend is probably the biggest thing that I'm leaving off here, and a lot of maps don't have that. For this map in particular, I just thought that, I think everything's pretty clear. You can kind of get a sense of what's a village, a city, and a larger city. 
But if you do want to put a key on your map, I think that can be great. You can see that this nearly finished map that I've been working on for a client definitely has one. And uh, yeah, it's just handy to be able to see these symbols and know what they mean on your map. I've even seen some maps that have a key or legend for terrain types so that you can tell, ah, this is grassland, this is prairie, this is swamp, etc. And once you start getting a lot of these extra elements on your map, it can actually be handy to put them all in one place, like all off to the side in one box, like you can see Maxime Place doing here on these beautiful maps. He's one of my favorite cartographers. All right, the map is done. Finally, episode seven in the books. I wanna thank you all so much for joining me on this journey. It's been a lot of fun. And of course, the mapping videos will continue, as I said earlier in the video. As I learn new tips, tricks, techniques, I will definitely be sharing them with you all. And in fact, I am currently working on a video for how to get started drawing maps in Photoshop. So look for that one coming up soon. I want to thank my patrons so much for their support of this channel. Patrons are people who support WASD20 on a monthly basis. They get some pretty cool rewards, including weekly live map drawing streams with yours truly and a whole bunch of other stuff. So definitely go check it out at patreon.com slash WASD20. I want to thank Dungeon Fog once again for sponsoring this video. Make sure to go check out Project Deos. And of course, I humbly thank all of you for joining me on this journey. Keep on being creative, unleash that imagination, get that pencil or pen moving, drawing maps and creating worlds. All right, that's all for this one, everybody. Take care, you'll see me again very soon.